in this portion of our guide on how to take a PoE camera that has been connected to your PoE NVR and how to access it using your computer. We're going to show you in this tutorial on how to connect a IP PoE camera to your router so you can access it from your computer. In the previous video, we showed you how to access it by connecting it directly to the computer, which is usually the preferred method because you're taking out other networking environments. So the first thing to take into account is here we've got a router and it's connected using the WAN or internet connection to our internet provided by our uh, ISP. Then there are number ports on the router. These number ports are what devices should be connected to. So on port one, I'll connect my camera and port two, I'll make sure I have connected my computer. So let's begin with that. To connect a camera directly to your router and so that you can access it through the web interface, the easiest way to do it is if you don't have what's called a PoE injector is you can use a power supply. So this is what a power supply looks like. This power supply is a 12 volts DC. Almost all of our IP cameras require 12 volts DC. Please check with us for proper voltage and amperage requirements. But for most of our cameras, we will suggest you buy a 12 volt DC 1 amp from us. The solid line shows and the dotted line together show this is DC current. It says 12 volts DC 1000 MA. That means it is 1 amp. And then it says center positive. The positive inside the semicircle means it is center positive. What that means is on the DC jet pigtail or plug on this camera or on this power supply, the center is positive and the outside is negative. That's what our cameras need. Make sure you get a UL listed DC power supply that's one amp to use with our cameras. So the first thing is you would power the camera. On all of our IP cameras there are at least two connections, a Cat5 connection, a RJ45 jack, which could be which is PoE usually, so you can use it for data or power and data, and a 12 volt DC jack. So let's begin with powering the camera. I'm going to connect my power to my camera and connect my power adapter to my surge suppressor. Then I will take a cable, in this case a blue cable, to connect from my camera to my router. So what I've just done is connect a network connection from my camera and power it and the camera is connected to the router. Then I will take a network cable coming from my laptop or my computer connect it into the same router. It is extremely important you connect to the same router, both the camera and the computer, so you can access it over the same network. Even then, sometimes our IP config tool might not be able to find it because in this case, if I've taken the camera from the back of the PoE and VR, the camera is going to have a 10.1.1. something IP address. And most likely your router is going to have a 192.168.1. something IP address. So, this is the way you'll connect your camera so you can access it on the config tool in an attempt to change its IP address so you can access it over the same network. If that doesn't work, then follow the above video because that'll show you how to do it through a direct connection into your computer. So th this is the proper way to connect your computer and your laptop, I mean your computer or laptop to your IP camera over your network router. The other way to connect it is Instead of using a power supply, let's say you have a PoE injector you've purchased from us. All of our cameras require a PoE injector that is 802.11 dot... 802, 802, all of our IP cameras require PoE injectors or switches that are 802.3 AFAT compliant. What that means is the PoE injector will negotiate the proper voltage and amperage with the camera. So here on this injector, there's a P plus D out that is power and data. That's for PoE and data. So I will connect my camera to the power and data using a red cable in this case for power and data into my camera. As soon as I connected it, the green light and the amber light both are lighting up. If I disconnect the camera, only the green light stays on. So the green light on this injector is in indicative of the injector getting power using the AC voltage coming into it from my outlet. So now I'm going to connect my camera again and then into my, la into my router I'm going to make a data connection into the data out from the injector. So what have I done here? 
<clears throat> I am sending power and data over the red cable to the camera, and I'm sending data only to my router. So now I've created a PoE connection to my camera. Notice the camera is not being powered by any other power supply. You don't need a 12 volt adapter in this case. You don't want to power it with a 12 volt adapter and an injector at the same time because you're going to most likely fry the camera that way. Only one power is needed by the camera. So both using a 12 volt adapter or a PoE injector, you can connect the camera to your router and then connect your computer to the same router and then access it using our config tool to find its IP address and change it, which I'll show you in the next step in this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to access a PoE IP camera taken from the back of your PoE and VR and plugged into a network and get it on your laptop. In the first part of this video, I showed you how to connect the camera to your network and making sure that your laptop is connected to the same network with a hard wire. This video, although I'm going to do it through a wireless connection from my laptop, my laptop is on the same router as the one that I showed you in the beginning part of this video. Either your laptop or desktop should be connected by wireless or by wired to the same exact router the camera is connected to. That's the main first point to make before we begin. Second thing is to get to the camera and get it on the same network as yours. You will need to understand the following. If I open up the command prompt, I type in CMD in Windows, and I type in ipconfig, it tells me the IP address of my network that my computer is currently connected to, which is 192.168.1.21. As you remember from the registration screen here that I'm showing you, going back to the registration screen from the NVR, the IP address of my camera is 10.1.1.65. I can't access that camera by just typing in ping.10.1.1.65. I'm not going to get a reply back because they're on two different networks. Even though they're connected by hardwire, they can't talk to each other. So you've got to change the IP address of the camera to work with this network scheme. I have to change the IP address of the camera to 192.168.1. something else. Any number between 2 and 254. I want to set it to 107. So 192.168.1.107. So how do I get to the camera? The first step is download and install our config tool. I have it downloaded here. You would right click it and you can open with Windows Explorer and then drag the file out. Make sure you do that. You're taking a file out of a zip archive you need to be able to do that, otherwise you can't install the program. Depending on how fast your computer is, this may take a little while. So now I have the program sitting here on my Windows desktop and it shows me its icon. Double click and run it and install the program on your computer. It may take a little while. If you are prompted with an account control message, a yellow and a gray message saying do you want to run it, yes or no, hit yes. Install the program. First thing, make sure you select English as the language, otherwise you'll just get Chinese prompts. Hit OK. Install the software, hit next. Agree, install. This video is being made in, the, in January 2019. Sometimes a newer version of the config tool will come about. Although this part of installing the config tool may be different if there's a new software that looks different, its interface looks different, but the theory behind how to access your camera over the network uh, from your computer using the config tool, it's going to be the same. Connect your camera, make sure that you understand that cameras and computers on different networks cannot just be accessed uh, by typing in the IP address, whatever it may be of the camera. You need to make the camera have the same IP address scheme as the computer. That's why we're doing this whole video. Once the software is installed, just hit close. So I've got now the installed config tool here, and I'm going to delete the other things I downloaded. I don't need them. You can choose to or not do that, but here I've got my config tool. So now I have my camera powered on, connected to the same network as my computer, and my computer is on Wi-Fi, and I'm going to 
run the config tool. It's going to ask permissions. You may see a screen pop up at this point, hit yes. So as soon as my config tool came up, it automatically found that I have an NVR on my network and a camera right here. And this is the camera with a 10.1.1.65 IP address. If I if you're not seeing this, that means either you have not connected your camera correctly to the network, it's not powered on, or you have a bad cable, or your antivirus or your firewall on Windows is blocking this program from running. So although I can't show you how to fix a cable or I've already shown you how to connect the camera correctly to your computer, it's your uh, obligation to follow that correctly. What I can show you is to make sure that your network adapter is configured correctly so that this program should run. If you have an antivirus or other firewall program blocking this from sniffing your network to find our devices, it would be your responsibility to turn that off or uninstall that program. The recommendation is you un uninstall it. Use a clean Windows computer. My computer only has Windows Defender, doesn't have any other antivirus running except for Windows Defender. My computer doesn't have any other antivirus or firewall program running. It's your obligation to turn those off or perhaps even use a clean Windows machine to use the config tool. Now what I can show you is an attempt to make sure that your computer's network port is configured correctly by finding the network icon. It may e either be a hardwired network icon on a wireless. Click on there. Go to Network and Internet Settings. In my case, I have a Wi-Fi network. So I want to come here and I want to make sure I go to status and I go to change connection properties and I'm going to make this network profile private. Make sure it doesn't say public because that'll turn a firewall on and it may affect the config tool's ability to find things on the network. I'm going to try and run the config tool after doing that to see if it'll still find something on the network. And we found one device but didn't find my NVR for some reason. So it's super important that you go back to network and internet settings and set in Windows 10 under status, change connection properties to private for your computer's network that you're connected to. And you can even turn off Windows Firewall. So private network, it says firewall is on. Go in there. I just, by clicking this, I just turn firewall off and it says firewall is off. So here's how I did that. Here, network and internet settings, status, change connection properties. I set it to private, configure firewall and security settings. Hit yes, made sure that private network firewall is off. So now I'm going to use the config tool again and run it and do device search and now I can find both the NVR and the IP camera again. So make sure you're following these for best practices. Now if I want to change the IP address of this so that I can access the camera I would hit search setting. I need to first specify the username and password for the camera. If it's a camera purchased before 2000. 17, the username is going to be admin and the password is going to be admin, unless you changed it. If it's a camera purchased after 2017, the password can be either admin admin or admin and the password will be the following, 10ILTXYH. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here and hit OK. Now, to change the IP address of the camera, I'm going to make sure I hit refresh again. Hit select, uh, actually you don't even need to select, all you need to do is hit the pencil icon for the IP camera and put in an IP address that you want it to be. Going back to IP config, my network's IP address is 192.168.1.21. I want to set the camera to 192.168.1.107. Subnet. The subnet is always going to be the same as the subnet mask you find here by running IP config tool which is 255.255.255.0. 255.255.255.0. The gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1.
has to be the same. The only thing that changes on a network is the IP v4 address because every device needs to have a different IP address with the last number only being different. Everything else needs to be the same for them to be on the same network. So 192, 168, 1, 1. Hit OK. A check mark will come up saying it's success. Hit refresh again and the camera that was there before is now going to be the IP address you assigned. Before you assign an IP address it's always good to make sure that IP address is not already being used by something else. Here's what I'll show you. If I do ping 192.168.1.107 currently my camera is not connected to my network. If I do a ping before you change the IP address of your camera, you always want to make sure this IP address is available. When I'm pinging it, it says request timed out. That means there's nothing on that IP address to ping back or communicate back. So that IP address isn't taken. That's what it means. But if I connect the I camera that I just changed the IP address to to 107, I connect it to my network, and I run the ping test again, watch what happens. The reply changes. It says it replied from the IP address with a certain amount of bytes and under a certain amount of time. So that means the camera is now pingable. And I can access it by going to Internet Explorer. Go to Windows, type in Internet. It'll suggest the best match Internet Explorer. Click on that. Some cameras that are newer even allow access over Chrome. And what you can do is, using one of our other tutorials on Chrome, you can follow the guide on how to access the camera over to Chrome. But this tutorial is meant to show you how to use Internet Explorer because it has a lot of add-ons the camera interface that it can work with. So now I'm going to type in the IP address of the camera. What is it? It's the 107 that I just set. So 192.168.1.107 As soon as I type that in it goes to HTTP 107 asks me for your username and password type in admin 10i capital L lowercase t x y h just like here I L 10i capital L T X Y H. Hit login. If you're logging in for the first time, you'll be prompted with, you know, you'll see the screen and say, please click here to download, install the plugin. It'll say run or save. You want to run the plugin, never save it. Now, the point about this is follow the, what I'm doing here very closely. At this moment, although you can't see it on your screen, you may be prompted by a yellow and gray box. It says, do you want to run this web plugin? It's unknown. Hit yes. And then it'll start installing like this. A, the plugin on your computer. The plugin allows the camera to interface with your computer and give you the full control over everything. Now, I've got my camera here. If I move my fingers in front of it, you can see there. And I can even control the lens. This is a zoomable camera, so I can go here and control the lens. I can go under settings and change settings. Go to IP camera conditions, go to backlight, you know, go to day and night, change the mode to whatever color, etc. Force the camera to be certain ways. We have other videos focusing on how to do that. This video is just meant to show you how to get into the camera and use the other videos to do other things. If you, we don't already have a video on how to do a certain topic, you can always request one by emailing us. But that's pretty much it. You've got into now the camera. It's on your network and you can access it. How do we get there? Properly connected it to the network, made sure our firewall was off, used the config tool, found it, changed the IP address, first specify the correct username and password for the camera, change the IP address, bring it to our network, use Internet Explorer, log in, allow the web plugin to go through, and here we are. Now once you're done with your camera, you can plug it back into your NVR after you set the desired settings. The NVR will automatically change its IP address to its own internal network. Should you want to bring the camera back from the NVR again, you'll have to go through this process again. Now, in the end, one last thing you should do, you can turn off the programs in the back, go back to your network settings and turn your firewall back on. Network and internet settings, status, change connection properties, configure firewall and security settings, hit yes. Firewall for private network, turn it on. If you're prompted with a message saying, do you, are you sure you want to do that, allow this app to make changes, etc., hit yes. And then your private firewall is on. Again, I'm only using Windows for my antivirus and firewall. That's how you should be doing it as well, to make sure that the config tool works. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video.